Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about No Exit by Taylor Adams, book versus movie. I read No Exit back in January because I thought it would be the perfect winter thriller. It had really great atmosphere and really well developed tension. In the book, we follow young college student Darby. She's driving home for Christmas to spend time with her terminally ill mother who's going in for sort of a vague emergency surgery overnight. An intense blizzard derails her plans and she winds up snowed in at a remote rest stop with four strangers, no cell signal, and a dying phone battery. It's already a pretty crappy night and then she discovers a little girl caged up in the back of one of the cars in the parking lot. Darby takes it upon herself to help the girl and try to discover who the kidnapper is at the rest stop. What ensues is an intense series of events in which Darby must stretch the limitations of her wits and resourcefulness in order to save the child and survive the night. No exit didn't blow my mind, but it was fun and fast paced and it did deliver on the atmosphere. Interestingly enough, the sort of overwhelming feeling that I walked away with was that that story would make a fantastic movie. Then like a month later, Hulu came out with one. So I figured with the book still fresh in my mind, it would be fun to do this video, sort of comparing the two and talking about some of the changes that I liked and didn't like and overall what I thought of the adaptation as a whole. So let's break it down into the good and the bad. Fair word there will be spoilers from this point on so if you haven't read the book or seen the movie and intend to do so and spoilers would upset you maybe return to this video after you have watched or read so starting with the good I really liked the cast Havana Rose Lou who played Darby wasn't necessarily who I pictured when I read it but I think she did a great job and there were some moments in the movie where she just looked absolutely feral which I think really conveyed sort of like how much Darby was going through it that night. David Reisdahl as Lars, however, was exactly who I pictured when reading the book, and I think he nailed it. And he also brought a surprising amount of sympathy to a character who really could have been one noted. Book Lars was actually really flat for me, and the way that Taylor Adams wrote him actually made me kind of uncomfortable. It's obvious that Lars suffers from some sort of disability, and in, in the book, Ash mentions that their mother drank while pregnant with Lars, but he's portrayed as really creepy and gross, and therefore Darby immediately suspects him of being the kidnapper. Later, the charming and chatty Ash kind of is set as a counterpoint to this notion, but she's also not wrong about Lars either. But in the movie, his character is portrayed with a bit more sensitivity. His actions are still criminal, but he's reluctant to severely hurt anyone, and even seems to think that him and Ash might be transporting the kids to better homes rather than trafficking them for darker purposes. I think the changes brought to Lars's character was actually one of the strongest things about the movie. Dennis Haysbert and Dale Dickey as Ed and Sandy were also really good. Ed being a heroic veteran with a gambling problem also gives his character a bit more nuance, as well as gives Sandy's character proper motivation for her actions later in the story. I was initially confused that Ash and Lars didn't look like brothers because that's a really big reveal sort of halfway through, maybe before that actually. But making them foster brothers I think was a good choice. That way they visually don't seem connected in the way that like the book doesn't really have to worry about where it's not a visual medium. It also gives them like a really dark background too. Also I think changing Darby's mother's medical issues into an aneurysm gives a lot more of an urgent feeling to her sort of dire need to get home in time and conveys the idea that like she's trapped there and in the book again she has like cancer which is still tragic but beyond sort of going in for this really vaguely described surgery like the rush to get home other than it being Christmas time it doesn't feel as urgent as something like an aneurysm is so I liked that change and I thought it made sense for a movie. Jumping towards the end of the movie there was a lot of small changes that I think added up to quite a different ending than what the book had but one of the things I did actually like about the ending was the fact that Ash accidentally kills Lars. It was so tragic and really again Lars had so much sympathy like even though what he's doing is wrong you can feel that he's being sort of manipulated and isn't totally aware of his actions and this culminating into Ash shooting him in the head with a nail gun on accident and him later slipping in the blood of Ash's victims. So tragic. It really stays in line with this more sympathetic take on Lars and it also shows how Ash is very quickly losing control of the situation and sort of how his 
actions and the consequences of those actions are stacking up against him. This part literally made me gasp out loud while we were watching it. I was not expecting it at all and I think again aside from Lars's character changes I think this was one of the strongest moments of the adaptation. In the book I believe if I'm remembering correctly it is Darby who kills Lars and it's sort of a revenge moment. It's her taking back control and really ensuring the child's Jay's safety and like I said earlier Lars is very one noted in the book and you feel less bad for his death so Darby killing him feels like a yes moment but again I think with the changes that the movie made to his character this ending for him made a lot more sense. Moving on to the bad. This is not a very popular adaptation from what I'm seeing so there were quite a few changes that myself and other people did not love quite as much. The thing that immediately made me worried about this movie was actually in the trailer. It shows that Darby is actually in rehab rather than being a normal college student and that she's been in rehab in and out for quite some time. I didn't love that they changed her from being a college student because I feel like the setup of this scenario really made it feel like she literally could have been anyone. She was just a normal person walking into a horrible situation and she tried to rise to the occasion in order to save this little girl. It was a very much like what would you do in this situation sort of feeling and I liked that our main character was quote unquote normal <laughs> in this regard. I think as the reader you could sort of immediately connect with her and I'm not a college student anymore but I was one at one point. I'm only a few years older than Darby and like the entire book I was like oh my god what would I do in this situation because I could see myself in Darby and so I think changing her into someone who has again been in and out of rehab not that those people don't exist obviously it just gave her character a weird edge that I didn't think super worked in this situation. I assume that they did this to kind of justify her knowledge of things like breaking into a car and being estranged from her family. But showing her like snorting coke in order to hype herself up enough to tear her nailed hand away from the wall in the latter half of the movie, ah, I just feel like it really robbed the character of her badassness. In the book, she her hand is like trapped in like the hinge of a door that Ash closed it in on and she has to rip it away just on pure adrenaline alone. She did not have drugs to help her with this situation and to have her need to use drugs I felt like really cheapened the bravery of the moment and the situation. Not saying an addict obviously can't be brave or heroic but it felt like a fundamental change to her character and I just didn't love the choice. Another thing I didn't love character wise was Ash. They made him, they made him too normal. Ash in the book is a psychopath. Also in the book him and Lars run a failing like contracting business and they have a bunch of tools in the van which is where the nail gun in the narrative comes into play. The nail gun is Ash's weapon of choice. His brutal way of doling out punishment where whenever Lars or Jay misbehaves. He refers to non-fatal shots as yellow flags and fatal ones as red flags which is psycho. It's, and it's chilling when Darby discovers this. Her first red flag that she witnesses is Ash killing Ed with a nail gun in like nails to the face and it is a brutal way to kill someone and in the movie his weapon of choice is just a normal handgun which makes him feel like a much more like I don't know normal villain. I don't know I feel like maybe that's being a little too overcritical but I feel like the nail gun really is a huge symbol of his character and I felt a little bit robbed of that in the movie. They do include the nail gun in the movie but it's much more sort of circumstantial. He picks it up because there's renovations happening to the rest stop bathroom so it's more of a him trying to work with what he's got situation rather than being a conscious choice. Part of the reveal of his character being one of the kidnappers so early on that works is that he is truly and relentlessly crazy and it just doesn't work the same way in the movie because the reveal still happens quite early and again he's just sort of a normal bad guy so there's a lot less tension in that regard because book ash you never knew what he was gonna do where i feel like in the movie his intentions and motivations were very clear 
right from the moment that she discovers he's one of the kidnappers. And segueing nicely into this next point, probably the biggest issue with the movie overall that I had is it lacked the tension that the book really delivered on. The book is fast paced, but it did a great job of building up to a point where it was just nonstop insanity and you felt exhausted by the end of it. There's a scene in the book in which Darby knows that Lars and Ash are the kidnappers and that they know she knows. <laughs> but she can't do anything without endangering Ed and Sandy's lives. The movie has a similar scene, but it's before she knows that Ash is really in on it, and it just isn't effect like, as effective in my opinion because she's just sitting there like sizing up Lars. So there's like a little tension, but it's quickly sort of brushed aside and moved beyond. Everything that made me think this would make a great movie in the book was just really rushed through in the movie, which is so sad. And as a final point, at the very end of the book, you find out that Darby has sort of weaseled enough information from Ash to learn about where his uncle lives. And his uncle is set up as the person who's sort of uh, in charge of this human trafficking thing. I believe it's their foster father in the movie. And he actually like has a woman or a girl kidnapped and held in this really creepy place for like truckers to stop and feel their pleasure and move on and it's super gross. She's able to get information from Ash to find out like where this man can be found and the police later like follow up and arrest him. So it feels like the root of the issue and like the justice of the situation is really fully solved and we just don't get that same resolution in the movie so it's just like what's to stop this guy from hiring two other people to fulfill his dirty work? So I don't know, smaller point, but I was disappointed to not see this in the movie because that was just like an extra like, man, Darby really came through for this little girl and little girls like Jay. <laughs> Overall, the movie was enjoyable for, you know, a Saturday night, but I don't think it was necessarily memorable. I'm mostly disappointed because it feels like a, a bit of a lost opportunity. Like the book was so primed to have like, to be a perfect movie adaptation. And they just made so many unnecessary changes in my opinion that really sort of lessened the impact of some of the scenes and elements of the book that made the book memorable. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of No Exit the movie or the book, which, whichever. Um, did you think the movie worked as an adaptation? Do you like the book or the movie better? Have you seen the movie and not read the book and liked it anyways? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. Follow my socials down in the description box below. Like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And as always, have a lovely day. Bye.